Hello, good morning, good afternoon, or indeed good evening, depending on your time zone and depending on when you are watching this. I'm James Innes, and this is my YouTube show, The Jobs Guru. It's Tuesday, the 11th of August, 2020. I'm delighted to see you all here for today's episode. I extend a very warm welcome to all those who have subscribed since the last episode. And if you haven't yet subscribed, then please do think about subscribing so you don't miss out on the next episode. Today, I'm going to be continuing with my regular Tuesday series of valuable interview advice, and I'm going to be talking about the big day. If you have any questions or comments as you watch, then do please type them into that comment section below. And if you like what you see, then do please hit that YouTube thumbs up. So the big day has finally arrived and it's soon going to be time for your interview. Apparently, more than two thirds of interview candidates check their horoscope for the day. If you find that reassuring, then all by, you know, do so by all means, but try not to read too much into it. It could just end up unnerving you. I suggest you concentrate your efforts on a, on a number of other areas, which I shall run through with you today. First up, breakfast and lunch. Whether or not you usually have something to eat for breakfast, make an effort to have breakfast on your interview day. If your interview is not until the afternoon, then you should all also make sure you have something to eat for lunch. Now, you might not feel much like eating. That's your nerves getting the better of you. But you definitely want to avoid going into an interview with an empty stomach. Having breakfast or lunch will boost your energy levels and help you to think straight, settle any butterflies in your stomach, any acid indigestion, and stop your stomach from gurgling embarrassingly. Now, whilst having something to eat is definitely a good idea, it wouldn't be advisable to have too heavy a meal. That might just send you off to sleep. Now, setting off, make sure that you allow yourself enough time to get ready. Gather your thoughts, go to the lavatory, check your appearance in the mirror, double check your appearance in the mirror, etc. Also, remember to take the letter inviting you to the interview and any maps, etc. that you might need. Um, they, might, they might just send you a printed chart for how to navigate your way through the premises, whatever. Depending on the circumstances, you might also need to take exam certificates, records of achievement, whatever. And you should always make sure that you take a copy of your CV or application form with you so you can refer to it immediately prior to and even during the interview if necessary. Ideally, you shouldn't need to refer to it too much. Reading through it shortly before the interview should be sufficient to refresh your memory of its contents. A quick word on Dutch courage. Avoid alcohol at all costs. If you've planned and prepared properly, then you won't need any Dutch courage. There are numerous stories of shy or nervous candidates turning up at the interview after one drink too many, including a bus driver. It goes without saying that alcohol impairs your judgment. It's probably best to avoid drinking too much the night before as well. You don't want to turn up for an interview hungover and dehydrated and suffer from the dreaded dry mouth. It could make it rather difficult to answer the questions. Conversely, you should of course avoid drinking too much water because you certainly don't want to have to interrupt the interview to go to the lavatory. And going to the lavatory on arrival at your interview or just prior to your departure never makes for a very good impression either. It's now been fairly conclusively proven that drinking coffee doesn't actually cause dehydration, but limiting your caffeine intake is advisable nonetheless. You definitely don't want to appear overly manic to your interview. If you've ever seen the, the film Trainspotting, you might recall Spud's famous interview. You know, just search Google Spud Trainspotting interview video on the internet and you'll be sure to find a clip. You should also, of course, avoid any non-prescription drugs, children. And I definitely recommend steering clear of garlic and curry as well, um, and other, any other pungent foods before your interview, even the night before. They're likely to remain in your breath, and if you sweat when you're nervous, and most of us do, the organic, uh, organic chemicals that, that cause these odours are likely to ooze out all over your skin and to evaporate into the air around you. Yuck. Best avoided, really. Also, whilst you might feel a greater need for a cigarette than usual, try a nicotine patch for the day instead. Smoke before an interview and the smell will follow you into the interview room on your breath, your, your clothes and in your hair. As an ex-smoker myself, I know that nicotine patches don't relieve the craving as effectively, you know, attacked by a fly here, sweating, nerves, as effectively as a proper cigarette does. But today is definitely one day when it will be worth the suffering. Got any gum chum? Oh, well, chewing gum might be a good idea before your interview to freshen your breath. Make sure you discard it before you arrive for the interview. I've interviewed candidates who have chewed their way the whole way through, and it definitely doesn't make for a good impression. Neither does it make for a good impression to arrive in a section and drop your gum into the bin before you even get to the premises. Sorry. Hello? Yes? No? I'm at an interview. What? <clears throat> Sorry about that. Make sure your mobile phone is switched off before you get to the interview. Make sure it stays switched off during the interview and make sure it stays switched off until you have most definitely left the building. And make sure you don't forget any of the above. It's common sense, but you'd be surprised how many people think, you know, they don't think about it or they forget, I don't know. Surveys show that having a mobile phone ring during an interview, or, or worse, actually answering your phone during an interview, it's a top 10 reason for a recruiter to reject a candidate. People do it. It's unbelievable. Unless you're applying for work as a Dom Jolly lookalike, 
don't even think about leaving your phone switched on. And if you do forget to turn your phone off and it subsequently rings during the interview, just ignore it or turn it off as discreetly as possible. Apologize profoundly and sincerely. You might just about be able to get away with it and salvage the situation. So now we're not far from the end of today's show. I'll be back tomorrow, which is Wednesday. Remember, this show is Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, each and pretty much every week. It's a tough job, but someone's got to do it. So two more things. First, I'm squeezing some routine but important requests. Do please check me out on social media and connect, follow or otherwise stalk me. But please don't troll me. Life is too short for trolls. If there are any questions or comments about this episode, about the show in general, or indeed about life, the universe, Playmobil, whatever, then do please let me have them below in the comment section. If you like this episode, then do please hit it with the YouTube thumbs up. Think about subscribing and ring the bell so you don't miss out on the next episode. <clears throat> now, finally, what is happening in the next episode? Well, tomorrow I'm going to be tackling a question from one of my viewers and also looking at an interview question. Namely, why haven't you achieved more in your career? Gosh, it's a little harsh, isn't it? I do hope you'll tune in. Thank you for watching today. Keep safe and be well, my friends. Goodbye.